Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, maybe it would be nice, Gene. Um, now, let me make one correction here. The station there is KYW. Yeah. Thank you. KYW. We're proud to have those folks with us now on the fine lineup of NBC stations. Thank you very much. Uh, Gene Autry handing me a tissue, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> my next guest is a classic example of the American dream come true, as I mentioned earlier. A poor boy from Texas, he became a huge international star, appearing in 93 motion pictures and selling millions and millions of records. He now owns one of the best teams in baseball, the uh, dreaded California Angels, and uh, looks like there could be a World Series in their future. We're delighted that Mr. Autry could be with us here, here tonight. Please welcome Gene Autry. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, it's an honor, and, uh, and I've admired you for a long, long time and in, enjoyed uh, a lot of uh, the Angels uh, baseball games when I lived in California. And are you in town on baseball business presently? Not especially. No, I've been up to Boston to watch the uh, Angels and the Red Sox over there for a couple of days, and I decided to come down and visit with you. Uh, is, is there any chance of a, uh, a couple of weeks ago, it looked like Tommy John... Uh, presently pitching for the Yankees, we're going to be going to Anaheim. Is there any chance that that's going to happen now? Well, actually, I don't know. I've uh, talked to George Steinbrenner, but uh, up to now we haven't uh, had a reply. So I wish I could say yes, but right now I don't know. Uh, the Angels have made some offers to the Yankees? Well, yes, we would make some offers for him. Uh -huh. And when is the deadline before it would be too late for him to help out in the playoffs? Well... We would have to have Tom and John in our lineup before September the 1st. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that if we could make a deal, it'll be concluded in the next two or three days. Yeah. Uh, what is that like, uh, dealing with George Steinbrenner? Uh... <laughs> well, George is a fine guy, really. Personally, uh -huh. I, I'm very fond of George, and we get along fine. And I think he gets along with everyone, but, uh, but his players. <laughs> he might have a little trouble with his players, but I don't play for him, so I get along with him fine. Yeah. Um, this, this must be your biggest thrill this season in baseball, huh? It looks like you, you've got the, uh, the horses to do it, as they say. Well, I hope that it's a World Series because uh, I know that I'll never win an Oscar because I'm not going to make any more pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so I would settle for a World Series ring. Yeah. Uh, let's now. I keep talking. This really is your life has been like a, the American dream. You, uh, a young, a young fellow in uh, uh, Chelsea, Oklahoma, was it? Well, I was actually born in Texas, but uh, I grew up in Oklahoma and I worked for a railroad in Oklahoma. So most people associate with the. Uh, uh, as an Oklahoman. Now tell me the story about you working, you working for the telegraph, uh, in the telegraph office one night, right? Well, I was actually working for a railroad. I was a telegraph operator on the Frisco Railroad, and uh, I met Will Rogers. And uh, he heard me sing and uh, encouraged me to uh, try out for records and radio, and I always gave Will Rogers credit for given me a little bit of a boost mm -hmm. when I needed it. Mm -hmm. And uh, shortly thereafter, you went to, to New York City to become a singing cowboy? No, not exactly, uh, David. <laughs> <laughs> I, I came to New York, and uh, I was walking up and down Broadway with the guitar under my arm for quite a long time. And finally, I had an audition with the Victory. In those days, it was called Victory. Now it's RCA Victory. But uh, it didn't happen quite that fast. The first audition I had, well, I don't think they knew what country Western music was all about at mm -hmm. that time. So, What year was that, roughly? Oh, that was back uh, about 1928 or 29. All 1928. Right. Do we have time to take a look at some, uh, one of uh, the, the films that uh, Gene made? And uh, this is from, do you know what we're going to take a look at? This is uh, Get Along Little Doggies. Is that the... Uh, Get Along Little Doggie? Is that, that the was, film or the song? Well, the song was perhaps way earlier than the picture. The mm -hmm. picture was made, if I remember correctly, about 1936 or 1937, somewhere along there. Okay, well, we'll take a look at it and discuss this later. Take a oh. look at the monitors here in the studio, if you will, folks. Uh, we're going to go away for a commercial. We'll be right back with uh, more of Gene Autry. <laughs> Thank you.
show. Gene Autry is with us. Uh, were you the, the first singing cowboy? Well, I'm afraid I was. Uh, John Wayne made a picture a number of years ago, and uh, one of the Sons of the Pioneers dubbed in the uh, voice for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, one time, why it was very funny, he said, you know, Gene, if I could have played a guitar a little bit, and maybe a carried a tune, I might have been the first singing cowboy, and you wouldn't have been here at all. And I said, well, Duke, it was not my fine singing that really put me over. It was my outstanding acting that did all that. <laughs> uh, in, in the, um, now, I know one time in your career, you held out for, you went on strike, didn't you? Yes, I went on strike. Once. What was the issue there? Well, that was uh, way back in about 1937, I guess, and uh, I had been voted uh, the number one Western star in pictures and uh, number four uh, overall. Uh, uh, Gable was first, Mickey Rooney, and uh, one other, and uh, I was fourth. So I thought I was entitled to more, more money, and so I went on a strike. <laughs> uh, so Don't tell these ball players that's about That's what that. I was getting to. You're, uh, uh, you understand that, uh, that leverage pretty good then, don't you? Oh, I understand what they're talking about, yes. Now, uh, what did the, the, the movie company that you were with at the time, how did they respond to that? Well, they finally gave me a raise and uh, changed my contract, mm -hmm. and uh, I stayed there for another 15 years. Did, um, did uh, uh, Roy Rogers have anything to do at this time with that? Was he involved in that transaction at all? No, he really wasn't. Uh, he was under contract at that time to Republic Pictures, but uh, he didn't have anything to do with my uh, going on strike or anything like that. In fact, years later, I think he had quite a lot of trouble negotiating his own contract. Yeah. Uh, these movies, and then the ones that, uh, that Roy Rogers used to make, they were contemporary, weren't they? They were pretty much of the, of the era. Pretty much so. In fact, uh, I went into the Air Force in 1942. And uh, Roy came along, and uh, more or less uh, the studio used the same format for Roy Rogers that they had used for me, and uh, they kept it going for uh, uh, the balance of his contract at Republic and uh, also for the balance of mine. However, after the war, why, I formed my own company, and I left uh, Republic Pictures, but Roy stayed on. Mm -hmm. Did you ever, were you ever in a film with him, you and Roy together? Yes, we worked in film in 1936. It was called uh, The Big Show, and uh, I had a fight with Roy. And uh, believe it or not, I, I licked him. I won the fight. <laughs> now, this was a, a fight in the film. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about John Wayne? Did you ever make a film with him? Uh, I worked with John Wayne in one film at, uh, it was called Wide Wide World. And John Ford directed the film, and he had all of the cowboys at that time, past and uh, the present. And uh, he had clips of Hoot Gibson. Uh, Buck Jones, Ken Maynard, Tom Mix, myself, John Wayne, and Gary Cooper was in it. And that's the only time I ever worked with uh, Duke. However, Wayne and I worked at the same studio for 12 years. Mm -hmm. Was he uh, were you a friendly, nice, likable guy? Very, very fine. Duke and I were the very best of friends. Yeah. A wonderful fellow. And in addition to all of these motion pictures, you uh, sold uh, millions and millions of records. Was it Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer that sold how many? Or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was the biggest uh, record I ever made, and uh, it was the biggest one on the Columbia label. Uh, so far, it's sold over 12 million records. 12 million. Uh, we have to pause for station identification. We'll be back with Mr. Gene Autry. <laughs> So, uh, Gene Autry is here. Um, you mentioned that you were on strike. I'm curious now, in those days, what amount of money was at stake? Do you recall? I made the first eight pictures for $250 a week. That was my salary when I made my first picture. And actually, I was making more money than that at uh, WLS in Chicago. 
but uh, I was willing to go out and make pictures for that salary. Mm -hmm. And do you, do you know what you were holding out to be jumped up to from the 250 a week? Well, uh, when I finally settled, they started paying me by the picture, mm -hmm. not on a weekly salary. And I think that I jumped from uh, about 10000 a week to where I got $10,000 a picture. Yeah. Wow. So pretty good dough. Well, it was back in those days, sure. yes, that was yeah. a lot of money. Uh, and, and you invested it wisely. You now own most of Southern California. Just, <laughs> uh, just you own hotels, radio, TV, Major League Baseball. And I want to find out how you went about acquiring the Angels. But we have some uh, more footage of uh, Mr. Gene Autry. And uh, we'll take a look at that. Sure, let's just take a look at that now. And uh, this will be from, uh, do we know what film this is from? No, don't know. We don't know yet. We'll find out. You, you gave that up, didn't you? You don't do that anymore. Never. You were uh, quite the ladies' man, weren't you? Well, I wouldn't say that. I never had an opportunity to kiss the girl. I always kissed the horse. Yeah. Uh, but it's interesting. Were you always Gene Autry in your films, or did you ever play Herb Johnson? Or, or... Uh, no, I uh, used Gene Autry in all of my film career, with the exceptions of one picture that I made at 20th Century Fox with Jane Withers. But uh, when I first went to uh, Hollywood, I had several big hit records at that time called Silver Hair Daddy of Mine and Mexicali Rose and, uh, oh, The Last Roundup. Yeah. And uh, because I was pretty well known on records and on uh, uh, radio back in uh, the Midwest, especially Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and all of those western states, well, they used my yeah, name. Don't want to mess and with a good deal. They just kept building it up, and they never did change. Uh, now, tell us how you acquired uh, the California Angels. Well, uh, our station out there, uh, a partner of mine, Bob Reynolds, and I own the KMPC in, KMPC in Los Angeles. KMPC, that's correct. And we broadcast the Dodgers for about uh, three years. And uh, after the uh, contract was up. Walter O'Malley moved the team from uh, uh, KMPC over to another station. He, could, he was having trouble hearing in the mountains, wasn't he, the signal? I think that's what he yeah. uh, claimed. He lived up at Big Bear somewhere up out there about that time. And uh, we were known as a sports station. We uh, broadcast the rounds and uh, UCLA football, UCLA basketball, and was really a sports station. And, uh, of course, when we lost... Uh, uh, the Dodgers, we felt that we had to have a uh, Major League Baseball Club. Mm -hmm. So the uh, American League was expanding to 10 clubs, and uh, Los Angeles was going to be one of them. So uh, we went in and uh, talked to Hank Greenberg. I thought he was going to get the franchise at that time about broadcasting their games. And uh, he pulled out of uh, the bidding for the uh, uh, Angels Ball Club, and uh, Bob Reynolds and myself went to uh, the president of the American League and uh, put in our application for it, mm -hmm. and we got it. And you were bidding against Charlie Finley, who later got the Kansas City franchise, That's right? absolutely correct. You right up to date on all of that <laughs> stuff, believe now, me. Now, uh, <laughs> quickly, Gene, uh, did, does it look like you're going to get Tommy John or not? Do you, are you optimistic about that or not? I wish I could tell you yes, but I don't know, you don't really. Know. I'll tell you what I will do, though. I'll let you know in 24 hours. Okay. Uh, Gene will be back here tomorrow night with the announcement <laughs> we've all been waiting for. Uh, it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much. Good luck uh, with your baseball team. Good luck with everything. Gene Autry. We'll be back with wilderness survivalist Tom Brown, Jr.